Hi everyone. Thank you again for joining us for another Instagram Live with the ERA Coalition. It's Monday, August 30th, and uh, we are happy to be joining again with two special guests, Jennifer Carol Foy, and uh, we have from the Legal Women Voters a really special guest, Jessica Jones Caparel from the Policy and Legislative Affairs. Um, we're gonna give them a couple of minutes for them to join and uh, we're gonna be talking again about VAWA and the ERA and also about the uh, rally for the ERA which we had last week uh, with uh, incredible feminist groups all around the country and uh, we're just getting started so let's just give everyone a couple of minutes to join and Meanwhile, also give some people time to participate and, uh, and join the live. So, um, as always, we're going to have Carol Jenkins. And uh, we're waiting for a guest in the meantime. And uh, if you haven't uh, done it yet, please follow us on our Instagrams or our Twitter account and Facebook. And we have Carol here. Hi, Carol. How are, Hi, How are you? I'm great. So we're just waiting for the legal women voters and uh, Jennifer Carrefour to, to join. So we're just giving, uh, giving them a little bit of time. And I don't know if in the meantime, you also want to talk to um, everyone who is joining about Rally for the ERA and what we have coming up and, you know, like all the exciting things that are happening. Sure, sure. Well, we can talk about our Women's Equality Day rally in front of the Supreme Court, you know, which was such a glorious time because it had been so long since we'd been able to to gather in person. We had 200 people, advocates who came from across the country to demand uh, that the Senate do something. We were standing in front of the Supreme Court looking at the Senate saying our eyes are on you we need you to vote on sj res one which is the time limit removal resolution the house of representatives has passed it twice uh so we want the senate to do that now but what you know what a wonderful gathering uh you know to have people from arizona and nevada and minneapolis and you know not only the ones from D.C. and New York, uh, but uh, it was just a terrific event. So we look forward to more of those. Uh, now, hi, Jessica. Hi. How are you? We've been joined by Jessica Jones Caparell. I want to give you the official title, Policy and Legislative Affairs Senior Manager at the League of Women Voters. Thanks so much for having oh. me today. I'm excited to be here and have this great conversation with you all. We're so glad you're here. We were so thrilled to have Dr. Turner with us uh, in Washington in front of the Supreme Court who gave a wonderful, uh, you know, demand, a plea, you know, a statement of fact that we really need to get the Equal Rights Amendment done. And I love going on your website and seeing that the ERA is one of the highlighted issues <laughs> Uh, and we, of course, had worked, had worked together during the last election to, you know, to try to get equality voters out. What What's your sense uh, now of where, where we are uh, with the ERA? And thank you so much for being here and for the League's uh, continuous support. Absolutely. Um, it is an honor to work on this issue um, in coalition with you all. Um, this is something that's very important. It's an issue that the League has worked on since the 1970s. Um, you know, just making sure that uh, we can make the ERA part of our Constitution and guarantee the same freedom for everyone um, in our country. Um, so my sense is that, uh, you know, the, uh, the timeline bill, which I think a lot of us have discussed um, over the course of the last couple of years and for a while, actually, uh, that's passed the House of Representatives earlier this year. Um, and um, we're still working on the Senate um, 
seems a lot of things we're working on in the Senate, though. Um, but I remain hopeful, and I think we have some really good, broad, bipartisan support um, in the Senate. And we'll see um, we'll see this get done this session of Congress, hopefully. Right. We hope so. The 117th Congress needs to get it done. Uh, we spend uh, at the coalition a lot of time uh, in the members' uh, offices. Uh, presenting uh, the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, we do have uh, 52 votes of the Democratic Caucus and two Republicans, Lisa Murkowski, who is a co-lead sponsor, and Susan Collins, who joined us. So in terms of bills that are in the Senate, you know, we are actually, sad to say, doing much better than many, uh, you know, really great ideas uh, because we do believe that we have the 52 the 52 votes but getting those you know we're, we need 60 uh, if it goes the regular order route uh, we're spending a lot of time you know going to the offices uh, presenting the case and getting some really interesting interesting questions and you know I think that you know for for us today to talk about the things that the Equal Rights Amendment would do, and you know, you know, this fundamental constitutional underpinning that, that we need. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, what do you think the benefits uh, will be of the Equal Rights Amendment? Sure. Um, so, I mean, at the, at, the, at the very end of the day, we all deserve to be treated equally and to, um, to exercise the rights that we have equally, no matter who we are, um, what, you know, what our, what our sex is, what, um, how we identify. Um, so really this is about leveling the playing field and ensuring that, you know, women, um, can, can I, can do the things that every you know, everyone else can do in the country, uh, and ensuring equal rights. Uh, so I, I mean, that's, it's very, it's very basic for me. Uh <laughs> I know it seems so simple, doesn't it? It's like the thing that absolutely, should happen, must happen. What is the problem here? We've just been joined by Jennifer Carol Foy, who knows what the problem is. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, she was the delegate who carried the Equal Rights Amendment across uh, for us in Virginia, gave us the 38th state that we, that we needed. Uh, Jennifer, thanks so much for being with us. I do want to say she also, after that, ran for governor of Virginia and came in second behind Terry McAuliffe, which is a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. Jennifer, thanks so much. The ERA and, and doing as well as you did in the governor's race for your first run for it, incredible. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Carol. I'm honored to be here with all of you. Great. And Jennifer was with us in front of the Supreme Court uh, last Thursday, Women's Equality Day. I do want to let you know that how dedicated we are at the coalition. Our DC director had her baby on Women's Equality Day while we were in front of the Supreme Court, a little girl named Lena. So congratulations, Bettina. Uh, you did it on time. <laughs> it's amazing. Jennifer, talk to us a little bit about uh, your experience in carrying that bill. And I know you always say there's only way, one way to spell equality, and that's ERA. That's right. That's right, Carol. I mean, I can tell you that I'll never forget uh, having conversations with um, Eileen Davis about how we're going to get this done, how we're going to make it happen, especially, you know, with all the momentum that's, that's, that was going on. You had the Violence Against Women Act that was, you know, quickly approaching ex expiration. You just had, you know, the attack and the war on women that was going on. Um, you know, we have so many issues with paid family medical leave, paid sick days. Um, you know, trying to reduce the black maternal mortality rate. And it was like, this would be a fundamentally great way to ensure that 160 million women and girls have constitutional equality. So let's get it done. And what's unfortunate is that when I brought it to the attention of some people, you know, they said it was, you know, not top of mind, you know, it was a dead issue. And the response is what the ERA coalition always says, there's no deadline on women's equality. So fighting the good fight, you know, working with all the wonderful orgs, having a bus tour throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia and making the Equal Rights Amendment one of the top three issues um, on the ballot in Virginia. So it helped us flip uh, the House of Delegates. It helped us win the majority in the trifecta here in Virginia. And I can't tell you, it was one of the most exciting moments in my life to carry the resolution to actually make Virginia the 30th and final state needed 
to enshrine women's equality into our founding document. So it was fantastic. Right, right. So as, as many of you out there know, their Article 5 of the Constitution says that there are only two requirements for amending the Constitution. Uh, I mean, even though it sem seems so simple, it's really very hard because it has to pass in Congress. And that happened in 1972. And then you need 38 states to ratify it. If you could imagine for people who say, why don't you guys start over now and we look at Congress and we look at the states and we wonder, could we really get it done? And we've been working on this for a hundred, a hundred years already. Uh, Jessica, talk with us a little bit about, uh, I, I know that the Violence Against Women Act, we always say that, that what the Equal Rights Amendment would do is give us a chance to put some of those things in place without having to reauthorize them and vote for them, you know, every two or three or four years and to have to worry about who is, uh, who is in office. So if you could talk with us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, you know, I think the Violence Against Women Act and the ERA at their core, um, they're really about acknowledging women's um, basic humanity, you know, um, and by enshrining the ERA in the Constitution, we're saying that American women, um, and not just women, but, you know, non-binary folks as well, uh, are people who deserve equal rights. Um, and the Violence Against Women Act um, also says that as people, uh, women deserve to live free from domestic violence, from sexual assault, from stalking, um, and the dangers that prevent so many of us from living our fullest lives, right? Like how many times have you been concerned about you know, walking walking home in, in the dark? Um, right. You know, and, and that's not something that we should, should be worried about. Um, so at their hearts, I think both of these, um, both the ERA and um, the Violence Against Women Act, you know, tell us that women matter. Um, they tell us that women deserve um, the same rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness um, that have historically been allotted not only um, only to white, um, straight, or cisgender um, men. So, uh, you know, having those two things enshrined in law and in the Constitution um, really will level the playing field and ensure, you know, that we're ensured basic human rights. Right. Uh, Jennifer, if you could talk with us a little bit about sexual assault and the military. You know, we've had just had a commission to examine it. And there are instances at uh, the Virginia Military Institute of which you are, you know, a graduate. And, you know, that was RBG's, you know, one of her big cases, uh, you know, uh, VMI. Talk to us about what or why you think uh, this is such a case of the military in military institutions? That's a great question, Carol. I have to say that, you know, violence against women persists, whether it's rape, stalking, sexual violence, um, because of the complacency and uh, the lack of attention that's been mm -hmm. to it. I mean, women, we've been treated as second class citizenship uh, since the dawn of time. And at the end of the day, we need more uh, elected officials. We need more officers, people in the courtrooms, the boardrooms, the state houses, um, and the courthouses, uh, leading battalions and everything who look like us, who understand, you know, what the symptoms are so we can uh, get to the remedy. And the remedy is ensuring that we have robust legislation like the Violence Against Women Act, that we are training our leaders and uh, the future of this country to understand, you know, bodily autonomy, to understand um, respect that women are equal and how to behave and what's professional, what's acceptable, what's not. You know, one of the things I hate is when something happens and one of the first involving a man and a woman and one of the first things that's said is, oh, what did she do or what was she wearing, mm -hmm. right? Like as if we are uh, deserving or asking for rape or violence um, or, or, or something like that because of our appearance, those type of things have to be done away with and they have to be addressed head on. And it's gonna take the part of, you know, social media is gonna take the part of the media is gonna take the part of everyone teaching not only our daughters, but our sons as well, what is acceptable and what's not. And that's why legislation like the Violence Against Women Act, legislation that will uplift women and have us really be equal in pay and so future generations don't have to worry about pay discrimination, violence, uh, violence in the workplace, violence at home, all these things that can tackle uh, the issues that we face holistically will uplift all of us. 
Yeah, we uh, just recently had uh, a, a town hall uh, on Black Women's Equal Pay Day. Uh, Jessica, I'm sure you know these statistics, which are just so horrific, 63 cents on the dollar, you know, which is bad in itself for what a white man made the year before. But the fact that it's only improved by three cents in 30 years is the outrageous element uh, of it. And, you know, as we keep saying, we need the Equal Rights Amendment because so many of these problems that we're facing are intractable. They've been, you know, the same for years, decades. Um, you know, uh, what what is your sense of of why there is this lack of movement and lack of improvement. You know, because so many people, you know, tell us as we fight for the ERA, women don't need the ERA, they're doing fine. You know, the women of America are not doing fine. Jessica. Yeah, so I mean, I think a lot of these, it's, first of all, it's outrageous. Um, uh, whether it's black women or, you know, any women making less than um, what a man um, makes. It's just outrageous that we have to wait so long to make it up to equal pay. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, a lot of the systems um, that we are working to change are rooted um, in systemic racism. Um, they are systems that are, um, you know, were originally founded uh, to uh, address, you know, white prosperity for white males. Um, and so, you know, that's one of the things um, that we have to, we are working against. And, you know, it's not that this isn't the only issue where we're encountering um, these systemic um, boundaries and barriers. Um, but as we, you know, so we have to, we keep pushing, um, we'll, we'll eventually knock them down um, and, and, and get through them. Um, but I think that it's, uh, you know, large and largely due in part to the systems that um, our country was built upon. Right, right. And what I often say is that if you're looking for the root cause of systemic racism and sexism, you will find it in the Constitution, and that's why it needs to be fixed. Uh, Velu, do we have any uh, comments or questions from from our audience? Uh, not specifically, but they're really for uh, Jessica Carroll, for, I mean, Jennifer Carroll Ford, of course, and then, you know, excited to see Jessica from the Lego Women Voters at Green. Uh, we need the ERA now, and uh, a lot of hearts. So it's <laughs> a lot of people are, are excited and interested about this conversation. Yes. Right, right. Your fan base is on, is on Instagram, you know, Jennifer and Jessica. So that is great. So going going forward, I, I know that we were so thrilled to actually be in person uh, last uh, last week. Uh, going forward, what do you think? the specific uh, things that we need to do in order to make this giant leap across. We know we have the Senate. We also have a letter going to uh, the Attorney General, uh, Merrick Garland, as soon as Christopher Schrader, you know, the Assistant uh, Attorney General for uh, the Office of Legal Counsel gets in. We know we have a bad memo there. We need, you know, him to lift that. So we're demanding that as well. You know, but but Jennifer, in terms of what specific things you see that we need to do and to get our our your fan base motivated to do. Yes, absolutely. So we have so much work to do. We have done a lot of the heavy lifting and we all stand on the shoulders of giants who've come before us, but we are so close. We are right there to be able to have our day in the sun and be able to have our constitutional equality. And it's going to take a little bit more. And so we have to all contact our senators. That is so important. And make sure they know the importance that women's equality is on the ballot. Balance Against Women Act is on the ballot. Ending the filibuster is on the ballot. Because at the end of the day, you know, there is no deadline for equality. And it's not a partisan issue. But if people want to play partisan politics with our equality, our children, our daughters, then we can vote them out. And it's really that simple. And ending the filibuster will help us get to women's equality, the Violence Against Women Act, which is definitely not a partisan issue. I don't think rape and sexual violence is partisan by any means. And giving people and victims the services that they deserve should be um, voting rights. It's all under the umbrella of ensuring that we have no second class citizens here in this country and that we are fulfilling the promises that this country has made, you know, give us what this country owes us and we deserve voting rights. We deserve uh, women's equality and to be put in our founding document. So let's keep up the push. We need to march. 
We need to contact our senators. We need to encourage them to support these measures and to end the filibuster. Great, great. Jessica. Yes, yeah, I'm so sorry. I keep getting kicked off. Our internet's being weird today. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm the one with the worst uh, Wi-Fi ever in the world, so I totally understand. <laughs> it's been working today, Carol. So, <laughs> right. So, yeah. Jessica, what do you what 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 steps are? I, I we know those senators. We need those senators. We need the attorney general. We need that memo scrapped. Uh, you know, we need uh, action in this to make sure that we get it done in this 117th Congress. Absolutely. And if you want to, you can go to the uh, league's website, lwv.org, and take action with us, um, as well as with the ERA Coalition. We have an action alert on our website. Um, everyone should contact their senators. Um, I will also give a huge shout out to our um, leagues all across the country. Um, we have, uh, you know, leagues in all 50 states and over 700 communities. And we are working on this at the ground level. Um, so if there is um, local or state action that you want to take, you can also um, link up with a league near you um, and get involved uh, that way as well. Um, a lot of passionate, passionate league members who are working on this issue. Right, right. I don't think many, or I don't think everyone understands how big you are and how powerful uh, the, the league is. You know, we've, you know, we know you, you know, but when you talk about a half a million, you know, part, you know, supporters and members and the 700, and every time I do this with Dr. Turner, she says, no, the big, the number is bigger than that. <laughs> so, you know, it's really, really inc incredible. So go to the League of Women Voters uh, and, you know, so Jennifer, how are we contacting you these days? We know that you, first of all, the League is a partner in the coalition. Thank you so much for joining us. Jennifer Carroll Foy has just come on as a member of our advisory council. So thank you so much for that. So you can you can reach her through us. But, you know, what what are you engaged in these days? Yeah, I can tell you that I am so busy. I am helping us keep the majority and the trifecta here in Virginia. So working with our House of Delegate races, um, please go and check them out. Uh, we've done some fantastic things here in Virginia. We've expanded Medicaid and broadband and education funding. And in order for us to preserve our voting rights, doing wonderful things like repeal strict voter ID laws, same day voter registration. Uh, we are the anti, you know, Georgia and Texas. And so if you want us to continue to push forward and, you know, be that line and hold the line of democratic majorities and state legislative bodies, we need people to support. So please, please, please support candidates here in Virginia running hard, keeping the majority on November 2nd. We're one of the only states that have a statewide election and the whole House of Delegates that's up. So that's taking up a lot of my time. My four-year-olds are still not potty trained. So we are definitely <laughs> working on that. Uh, they're the most adorable little boys, I tell you. They're great. <laughs> Give them time. With, boys are always later, you know, anyway. I'm so. hearing, I'm hearing that. And working with the Gary <laughs> Coalition now, League of Women Voters, and just all our amazing partners doing the great, great work of uplifting millions of women and girls across this country. Terrific. And Jessica, I know you probably want to say a word about the voting rights and, you know, what's at stake and gerrymandering and all of that. So, Yeah. Um, so redistricting um, or gerrymandering, whichever way you want to call it nowadays, uh, <laughs> starting in the States now, um, there's plenty of opportunities to weigh in on, you know, how maps are drawn. Um, League of Women Voters has a People Powered Fair Maps initiative. Um, we'd love to have folks get involved and really express, you know, what their communities, what they want their communities to look like and to pick their politicians, not the other way around. Um, and, you know, there's huge opportunities um, in Congress to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, which was just introduced and in passed in the House last week. Right. Um, and continue to push for the For the People Act, um, which has also been passed in the House um, and now is in the Senate. Um, we hope that they will be uh, taking that up. And Senator Schumer has said that it will be the first priority for the Senate um, when they come back in September. Um, but, you know, it, in addition to the ERA, um, just ensuring that we have equal voting rights and, and an opportunity for people to get to the polls, to um, express their freedom to vote, um, and you know to do it safely in a manner um, that that fits that fits best for them. Um, so we 
thank you. And uh, we're excited for all of the opportunities right now. That's we, do have, well, then... we do have a couple of questions from the. Okay, great. Well, yeah, so uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to try to read them as, as much as I can. So okay. I know that we did mention uh, the link between VAWA and the ERA, but if maybe you both can do like a quick summary. And, uh, and then I'll go to the other, they'll, you know, they're trying to, they also want to know how can they be part of, you know, like how to amplify the message with the friends. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll, after that, I'll try to, I'll try to go to another one and, and, and tell you. Jennifer, you want to start? Sure. So there is definitely a link between the Violence Against Women Act and the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, both of these are talking about addressing the hurt and harms that's been uh, inflicted on women in general. And so it's really about women's inequality and what we can do to peel that back. Because at the end of the day, we were intentionally kept out of our founding document and we have bared the repercussions ever since. That's why violence, gender-based violence has been ramp rampant. Gender-based pay has been rampant. That is exactly why majority of uh, women live in poverty with their children. And it's about really addressing this through policy and legislation and making sure we have the right elected leaders in place who understands that the war against women ends today. You know, we will be heard from. And the way that we do that is make our presence felt through our buying power, through our voting power. And that's why we need both. We need the Equal Rights Amendment. We need the Violence Against Women's Act, but we are not done. We also need paid family medical leave because we are one of the only uh, developed countries in the world who do not right. take family medical leave paid sick days, all of the things that will help uplift millions of women and families effectively out of poverty. That's what the link is. That's what this is about, treating women holistically and addressing the inequities that's been inflicted on us for far too long. Great. And Jessica, did you have uh, another thought on, on that? I think Jennifer said it best. Uh, and this is about, you know, and feeling she always, way. you know, she always does. This is a problem with Jennifer We do have another question. We do have another question. Um, so the other question is, what kind of future do you envision after the ERA is passed? And also, what will women and non-binary folks in the future get to take for granted that we have to worry about now? Right. Well, we do want to say that when we talk about the Equal Rights Amendment, we are talking about everyone. The only thing it says is that one cannot be discriminated against based on one sex. That's it. So I think that we go forward with that. You know, the, and we have gained so many LGBTQ partner organizations who join because they understand we are in this stream towards equality all together. Uh, we have to move as one. We've just gotten, I think, recently about almost 50 new organizations who have joined the coalition because they understand that this amendment you know is key to the future uh, of uh, of America and Jessica if you wanted to pick up on you know what the world looks like what America looks like once we've got the the equal rights amendment i mean i think one thing it it's going to you know it won't let us take uh, for granted uh, the opportunity to have those things that we've already talked about, like equal pay, um, like uh, maternal health care. Um, you know, we had to fight in the ACA to ensure that, you know, that, there, that women's health care was <laughs> equal. Um, so, like, I mean, I think it, it, it'll take, some, take, take away some of those inequities, um, but allow us to really um, put that at the, you know, put that at the forefront um, and, you um, you know, force our government to make, to see that uh, we are enshrined in the constitution now and they can't, they, they can't make laws uh, that take away our rights. Um, and so we'll have, we'll have some stronger footing. I mean, I'm always a very positive person. I <laughs> we need that positivity. That's great. <laughs> stay, stay positive. One, I wanted to mention too, the date January 27th, of 2022, which is the two year anniversary of the day that Virginia became our 38th state. Thank you so much, uh, Jennifer. Uh, because what we're uh, maintaining is that we actually have met the requirements uh, of amending the constitution 
passage by Congress and 38 states. Uh, and so we're going to act as if, and we know that others will be doing that as well, um, you know, with the two-year waiting period, which is also built into the amendment, will expire on January 27th. I, I hope you both are planning to be at, at the celebration with us when we, you know, have a big party. But the other thing that will be happening is that lawsuits will be filed based on that. We know we've got the time limit to deal with. And we know that we've got courts to deal with and something will always be going on. Well, maybe not always, but we'll continue to go on for a while. You know, but on January 27th, Jennifer, we're going to make you the uh, major hostess of the of the big celebration on uh, in 2022. I'm excited. I'm ready. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we want to thank you both so much for, you know, a terrific uh, conversation as we we knew uh, we would have. Uh, any questions that you may have, you can go to eracoalition.org. We have facts. We've got an action kit. We've got lots of events coming up, including uh, two screenings of the I Am Polly Murray film. Polly Murray was just an extraordinary. She was not only a lawyer, writer, priest, uh, one of the first uh, persons who uh, identified as non-binary, advisor to Eleanor Roosevelt, you know, and RBG and Thurgood Marshall, you know, did all of that. There's a great documentary that uh, we are hosting uh, with the National Women's History Museum and the John Burt Center for Black Culture uh, in September. So go to our website to sign up and come. If you're in New York, come in person uh, on September 14th. And if you want to watch the film and support both the History Museum and the ERA Coalition, uh, watch the screening on September 8th. And all of that's on our website. Jennifer Carroll Foy and Jessica Caparell, thank you so much for being being with us. You're both terrific guests. We want you back next week, too. So. <laughs> thanks for having thank me. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for, for watching. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Uh, Vilu, do you want to talk about the next uh, Instagram town halls coming up, or we we are still organizing the guests, but uh, we are hoping to have a conversation center around Latinx uh, for September, and uh, and hopefully in October uh, we also want to connect with uh, Indigenous peoples, Indigenous women that are working that are working and fighting towards equality. So um, hope you can tune then. And and thanks again, thanks Jennifer, thanks Jessica. This has been great. Uh, great conversation. So have everyone a good night. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thank you.